awesome. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us tonight. Thank you for your patience as I worked on getting on the call. I want to first give it back to our Georgia Rhea president, Mike Jacobson, and also our executive director, Karen Yap, for making sure we can bring you teleconferences and make your education a lot easier on the road coming to and from work and whatever time you know works best for you. I'm excited to have been part of a three-part telephone teleclass uh, series. It's an interview series that we've had with what I believe is one of the best real estate coaches out there, and he's right here in the Atlanta area, and he is a die-hard member of Georgia Rhea, and his name is Kevin McClay, and I've been getting great feedback from the people who've been listening to the past two calls. And tonight, uh, Kevin is going to take it to the next level and really answer some questions to make you, when you get off this call tonight, want to dive in and get that first deal. Or if you've done deals before, get back in the game and go harder. So with that being said, I'm going to turn the call over to our real estate coach for the evening, Mr. Kevin McQuay. So, Kevin, the call is yours. Thank you, Wendy. appreciate that. I really enjoyed this series. I'm hoping it's beneficial to the people that's listening in. Uh, one of the things I wanted to try to cover tonight was I've been been asked several questions over the last couple of weeks from some of the previous calls. I want to make sure that uh, the one, the common question was how do I get started and, and what things I need to do and what, what's my first step. So I want to go back and try to really reemphasize the uh, flow or the real estate investment process that we tried to talk about in the first two calls. And I'm going to quickly run through the flow chart that that I've created to, to try to give everybody some insight on what that consists of. Uh, and I, I'm really big on really big on starting with setting your, setting your real estate goals up front. And a lot of people say, well, how do I do that? Well, the first thing you do in, do that, in doing that and achieving that is you do an self-assessment self-evaluation of what's your personality type, what's your strengths, what's your weaknesses, so then you can create a plan that best suits your personality and your and your your circumstances. Everybody's plan is going to be different because everybody is different. So that's the first step. The second step is you got to develop your your source of funding because you need you need funding to be successful in this business. Uh, obviously, everybody wants to use other people's money, but you got to know who those people are and how much money they have, and how much money you need. Some of that will come from your from your planning on knowing what you need and when you need it. That's why it's so important to to create that plan. Then, thirdly, uh, once you've got the plan in place, you got to go out and you got to execute. You got to try to locate the deals. Uh, a subcomponent of locating those deals is your, is your marketing and, far, and farming uh, strategy. Uh, no one should have be in this business and doesn't have a solid marketing plan and a, a and, and a strategy on how they're going to find those deals because it's not just going to fall in your lap. Uh, and then once you find those deals, you got to be able to evaluate them and, and and understand how you expect them. Once you and and finding that deal, the next the fourth thing is you're going to have to be good at them. And negotiating, or find somebody that can negotiate those deals with the with the with the seller. Uh, those face-to-face negotiations are, are are tough for some people, and they're easy for some people, depending on your personality. That's why you do that self-assessment up front to decide what what pieces of this plan you're good at and that you're going to execute, and what pieces of this plan you're going to have to either partner up with somebody or or, or hire somebody to do for you. But you're going to have to negotiate uh, with those sellers to acquire the, the deals and acquire financing for that may, matter. And then you're going to have to close that deal. Once you close that deal, now you're sitting on this this deal. You got to understand how to fix it up or to rehab it, because whatever you buy is going to need some kind of work, and you have to decide, you know, who's going to do that work, how you're going to get it done, and some timelines on how long it's going to take you and how much it's going to cost you. So that's really really critical in that in this process, and then, and then once you do that, you have to mark, you have to to sell it or buy it. If you're going to keep it or sell it, you have to have a strategy to 
put in place before you buy on what you're going to do with everything you 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 purchase. So uh, then once you get to that, that's the end of the process. You start it all over again, and you just keep rolling over and over and over again. So that's kind of a highlight of what the uh, real estate investment process entails, uh, and and that and that that process is 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 not easy for a lot of people to execute against because I think the lack of education or experience stops a lot of people. Uh, it leads to procrastination on a lot of people's part, and there's lots of reasonings why people procrastinate. I, what I think is the biggest component is that is the unknown or not knowing everything about what you're trying to do. And I try to tell people you're never going to know everything about a deal or everything about real estate before you move forward. So you got to be able to pull that trigger. you got to put a plan in place, some timelines in place, uh, and, and then move forward with that. Because I talk to people all the time that's been in this business for four or five and some even ten years and afraid to pull the trigger. They, they say they still think they need another nugget of information before they get started or one extra thing they need to do. And all that does leads to is uh, is is no results, and you're not gonna you're gonna be successful in this career. So, having said that, I, I want to try to walk through that to try to make sure everybody on the call understands what the process looks like. And when do you have any questions you wanna ask me around that, centered around that? Well, I I think you kind of um, answered part of it. And like yourself, um, I spend a lot of time at Georgia, and I'm as I meet people, Kevin. I'm still finding that uh, you know people are saying to me they have so many products, and they they put them on the shelf, and your your shelf doesn't need another product to, to hold on to. So one one gentleman, I literally had to say, listen. Come out to Saturday's training. I really think it's going to help you. But after that, don't buy anything else. Don't buy another product. Get out there and do something. So how do you get people to just jump in the water and stop, well, like, um, holding themselves back? Well, you, you, you have to, I call it pull the trigger, but everybody's trying to find that last piece of information that's going to make them feel comfortable in doing a deal. And the only thing that's going to make you comfortable in doing a real estate deal is doing deals. That's the only thing that's going to make you feel comfortable and make you feel uh, like you, like you, you're going to be successful. That's why it's so important to try to partner with somebody that knows what they're doing or, or to find a, a good coach that can walk you through the process uh, because you're, the only thing that's going to make you feel comfortable is is to do deals, make offers. The way you the way you get good at negotiating with deals is by negotiating deals, not by reading a book, not by going to buying some guru's latest product. Now, don't get me wrong; I think you should, you know, you know, go to go to seminars and learn more as much as you can. But there comes a it becomes a point that you're paralyzed by just going and getting more and more data. And I say you need to change, transform that data into information. And the way, the way you make that transition of all this data that you might have sitting in your, on your, in your bookcase and, and, and on your walls in your, in your office is to get out and to, and to partner with people or, or bring people on board that, that, that's got experience to show you how to get it done. Because you can read a book about how to make an offer, but when you're standing in front of a seller, that seller's not going to always say everything that that's, that that book anticipates. So how do you deal with that? And the way you deal with that is with experience, knowing how to how to answer questions and how to how to gauge people. Uh, is it, 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 it comes from experience. So that's why I tell people this is a, this is purely a numbers game. You have to go out. You have to you have to get from behind that desk and from behind that computer and actually go talk to people and look at houses and make offers and try to negotiate with people. And that's not going to become comfortable by reading a book or taking another course. The, w the way you can co become comfortable at doing that is by doing it. And, you, and, you, and guess what? If you do it on your own without any help, you're going to screw up, but, that's, but hopefully you're not going to lose a ton of money while you do it. Uh, but you, 
the mistakes you learn from, if you have somebody that that you can partner with, you might run into less mistakes or fewer mistakes. Uh, if you had a coach, then that coach could also help you. Um, I know when I'm working with people, I try to go out on on some calls with people to to, to try to, sh- to see them see let them see how the negotiating process works and how you handle the questions that are not in the book or the things you don't come that, that that's not written in, in the in the guru's packages that you buy. Um, and, and a lot of it is just you, you just deal with it f- from experience. Uh, so I, I tell people it's always wise to, to, to take the time to try to partner with somebody or to, or, or to bring on a, a good coach that you feel comfortable with. Uh, one, one coach is not right for everybody. Uh, you you, you got to feel comfortable with, with, with that, that mentor or that coach. And if it f- fits your personality, Fits your 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 style, then then you run with it. So that's what I would tell people uh, in answer to your question, Wendy. And I would like to take it even one step further because the thing that I find uh, it, on the marketing side of coaching, I know you're the real estate side of coaching. I find that sometimes people really believe what they're doing is correct. Uh, So I'd like to give an example. Like I'll have people say to me, I want to attract more sellers. But when I look at their marketing, everything they're putting out is to attract buyers. So just shifting that one little thing. And I think as a real estate coach, you and, and, you know, coaches are, are, are able to look at what a person's doing and say, well, if you continue in this direction, you're not going to get the results you say you want. Is that true? Because sometimes yeah. people really believe that you know they they're attracting, they're gonna you know all they need to do is a bunch of yellow letters, and sooner or later somebody's gonna um, say they want to work with them. Well, I, but I they also, may need to focus on something else. Yeah, and and and, and on the real estate side, and trying to recognize a deal is just it's also not always intuitive on, on, on seeing a deal. I've seen people, I, I look at some houses and I see money, and some other people look at that house and they see problems. And, and what they don't understand, the problems are what, what leads you to the money. If a, pro, a house doesn't have problems, then you don't have an opportunity to get it cheap and to fix the problem and then, and then, and then make money off of it. That's how I look at, 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 at real estate. But to the untrained eye, is different because there are some very, very sharp individuals that decide to become real estate investors, and because they're very intelligent in their chosen field before real estate, they believe they can take a course or read a book and go off and be successful in real estate, and 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 that's that's unfortunate uh, because in real in real estate there are no there are no certifications to become a real estate investor. You anybody that that wants to become a real estate investor can just say hang a shingle out and say, now I'm a real estate investor. Because the, the government doesn't protect you. There's no guidelines to protect you from making mistakes, unlike some other professions. Like if you can't be a, a lawyer and go and, and, and go practice law without having a law degree, or you can't be a doctor and, and practice medicine without having a, a medical degree. But in real estate, you don't have those kind of safeguards. Anybody that wants to become a real estate investor can and they can, they can decide to be one. And that's unfortunate because we have some very in- intelligent people that get into real estate and don't and, and, th- and think they can just read a book or go to a course and figure out how to be a real estate investor, but it's, it's much more to it than that. To, to that. And, it's, and it's hard to, to, to explain to people how to see that. And I've, I've even had these people that come to me and say, well, I've got this mentor in New York or California that's helping me do this. The problem with that is that when you walk into a, 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 a potential opportunity or deal, you're looking at it through your eyes. And if your eyes didn't have the experience to, to recognize the deal, whatever you relate back to your, to a person that's not in the same room with you, it's going, to be, it's going to be filtered through the eyes that you brought to the table, not through their eyes. If you had experience walking in there, they could help you recognize what you should be t- paying attention to and what you shouldn't. What parts are important? What's not important? Uh, in the issues that, that in in the, in those in that property. So and all that comes from experience. So that's and one what of the I things think. I love most about being at Deal Makers, which is um, 
especially uh, you know when I when I see you overseeing the class, I really love the fact that you uh, literally will take a, a, a um, allow you know the the members to bring their deals in and and to put them on the on the bulletin on the board and share exactly what they've done, what they think they can do, and you literally break down the numbers and show yeah. them what it's really going to cost them because sometimes they really think, you know, I can make 50000 on this deal, and you show them, no, not with the rehab that you're going to have in this area, and did you check this out, and did you look at that? So I think that is awesome. You can't do that when you have a coach that's not right there with you. And, and also, I think that's one of the, the powerful things about uh, the, the sessions that we do at 10 o'clock on Wednesday mornings at the General, Georgia Rear Office, and, and all members are welcome uh, to come to that. Uh, it gives you an opportunity to not just bring bring uh, your deals, because we do share deals, but to bring your situations uh, that you that you are facing in your in, in in your properties, and we and we debug and and, and we and, and we try to figure out solutions to whatever problem you may have. You could have tenant problems. You could have you could have uh, 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 hardware problems. You could have appliance problems. You could have situations that you just want to bounce off of the group. You got some of the greatest, I think, greatest real estate minds in this in the city there because you got hundreds of years of experience when you told up all the people in that room trying to help debug your particular problem uh, and situation that comes up. We talk about all kinds of things uh, in, in, the, in that meeting. I think it will be worthwhile to anybody to, to try to carve some, to carve some time in their schedule to see if they can make those those meetings because we have anywhere from 20 to 40 people a, a week from 10 to 12 talking about real estate and, and real estate activities. And I try to bring speakers in from time to time we, uh, to, that, that focus on issues that are concerned of real estate investors. So I think it would be a great opportunity for people to come there and, 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 and bounce ideas off of even and to network. And that's another big component of all of those sub meetings. You want to try to sit next to people and network and tell them what you're doing, find out what they're doing, and who knows, you might might find somebody that can help you get to the next level. And the amazing thing about coming to the headquarters, I really believe that George Aria and, and, you know, Karen Yap, our executive director, the president, the board of directors, and and the the the, the uh, people like yourself who are overseeing the leaders of all these uh, subgroups, we really have a pulse in what's going on in real estate and investing. So it's shared, and the programs are brought in. And like you just mentioned, the speakers. Like this past week, we had a gentleman breaking down lead paint, and and you know we've had attorneys and. And, and lenders and everything you need to do your real estate deal is at Georgia. So it kind of like um, hurts my heart literally when I see somebody who has everything they need right there and they just won't jump in the water and they're waiting for the next thing or they think they're going to have perfect circumstances before they do the deal. And I love the way you just address that. You know, you're not going to find a deal that's that has no issues because then it wouldn't be a deal. Yeah. And and I think they're literally looking for that. Well, and then we so, also get the, the time to time we get people that that's looking for that perfect opportunity. And and it's, there are no perfect opportunities out there. Everything going to have this drama that you'll have to deal with and you have to work through. That's what makes it a value because if if you if you didn't have any kind of uh, problem with it? Why would you get it at a discount? Why would it be sold at a discount? Uh, so you got to be careful there. I agree. With, with, and 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 there is no one size fits all. That, so you're never going to know all the answers and have all of the the the, the a perfect situation when you're moving into a deal. You're going to have to do some real time thinking. Everybody wants to rain without the thunder and lightning, and not and it just doesn't 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 work that way. Well, you've heard the saying, everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die, right? So it's, <laughs> it's just funny to me. But um, let, let me ask you this, Kevin. What about somebody who says, I've gotten all my information. 
and I'm, I'm I, I, I've already met the coach I want that you know I think would be perfect for me, but I'm gonna wait. Well, well, in that scenario, I would I would tell the people first of all I hate the word wait. Uh, I think we should we should be multitasking and always moving toward trying to achieve our goal. It goes back to what I said earlier when I was de- defining the process. You need in that plan that you're making, you should have some concrete timelines that you're trying to trying to ad- adhere to. And and waiting shouldn't be a part of that plan. Now you do have to strategize. You have to you have to pace yourself. But the people that wait, you'll find yourself you'll be waiting for for months, for years. For decades, and I literally, I talk to people that's been doing research for a decade, and they still haven't moved into uh, the entrepreneurship and, and 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 real estate because they're still researching and, and trying to. So when you create this plan, if you have a, a good mentor or a partner that you're developing that plan with, part of that plan should be some some guidelines, some some goals, and in, in those goals, you should have some milestones, and uh, and and you break those milestones down even further to task and there should be some some timelines around that not not only with the task there should also be some financial timelines that you should be setting too how much I plan to make on a certain timeline and you may or may not meet those timelines but without those goals you're not going to have the the motivation to get up and, and, and do the things you need to do and I think that's where a lot of people drop the ball at they said I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to wait till the time is right. Well, what's what's your timeline? What kind of timeline are you working against? And and once you look at that timeline, you should be setting those milestones all the way down to what you're doing this month, what you're doing this week, and what you're doing today. And 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 if the activities, if you look back on your past week and your past days, and those activities that you've done in those past days are not value-added activities that are pushing you toward meeting your goals, then then you, then you have to reevaluate what you're doing, and and, and all, oftentimes that's what I think happens because I, I, life just gets in the way. Uh, life is not going to sit back and just wait for you to, to for the, for the timing to be perfect. There will be situations, there will be circumstances that come up that will deter you and will get in the way, and you have to make some conscious decisions. Am I going to not do this to do that, and and am I going to postpone this to do this? And those decisions have to be uh, value f- value centered to what your goals are. Because I tell people, if you haven't done anything in the last year, then you have you have other priorities that 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 are more important than being successful in real estate. Because you're going to do what's important to you, regardless of what you say. You might say one thing, but if you want to know what's really important to you, go back over the last week and see what you spent the most time doing. That's what's important to you. Go back over the last month and see what what you spent the most time doing. Those are the activities that are most important to you. And, and well, what sometimes, about a person who says, mm-hmm, "Go ahead." Sometimes you can be too close and too to the forest to see the trees, and and that's why you need mm-hmm. somebody outside to look at to help you evaluate what you what you're doing day to day. And that person will push you, just like a coach in basketball. You got great players that never won championships. I mean, people that are just fantastic because they, they they just don't have the discipline to do all of the subtle things to make them win the championship. And that's what you're trying to get at. You're trying to trying to achieve those goals, and you're never going to achieve those goals because because if you if you're trying to do it through your own through your mind, you're going to achieve what you've been getting in the last five or ten years because that's what your mind has gotten you. And you got to have a significant emotional event to change that men- mentality and that thinking to get to the next level. But on the other hand, and and I agree with everything you just said, um, I look on the other hand, Kevin, where I run into somebody who says, you know what, for me, I'm going to get started when I have all the cash. I don't have all the money that I, I feel, you know, I'm going to wait till I have more money. What would you say to that person? I would say this is not the, the, real estate investing is not a, a a destination; it's a journey. 
And so for the people that, that say that, I think you're looking at it wrong. It's not a, a, a switch you flip on that now I'm going to start. Uh, I think you should start with with caution and, 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 and patience, but but you have to start because and, and, it, it's a numbers game. It's going to be a while before you're going to be successful and you can, you can sustain your, your, your livelihood doing this. So that's a that's a journey, and in that journey, it's not not a not a switch you just turn on. So now I'm gonna do it. If you don't have the money right now, all the money you need, you can still start getting some of the know-how. And and guess what? There are deals out there that you that that may or may not may not need any more money that you do have. You may not know how much money it takes to 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 close the deal. You might get a deal that you can close with the amount of money you do have. But you don't, you won't know that unless you're out there and you're trying to uh, trying to work it. So I yeah, say, because don't you wait. know when we talk about the gurus and everything, I, I remember taking the Robert Allen, and he's been a mentor to me since the late '90s. And you know, one thing that he did was get us out there to do the deal. And I I I, I didn't have cash when I started real estate mm-hmm. investing. But I was able to purchase a prop, two properties from a young lady who was going through a divorce and just needed somebody to move her furniture out of the, the house while her husband was away. And I got the truck, cost me a few hundred dollars, literally got family members to put her stuff in the truck, and we drove the furniture to where she wanted, which was a house that her husband didn't know about, and she turned over two properties to me. So it's not always cash, and and that's what I want people to really get out of this, that once you put your foot in there, there's somebody at Georgia Rea that's going to be able to say, especially if you have a coach that's going to say, okay, this is where you are with the deal, these are your possibilities with it. Is that true? That's exactly the point I was trying to get at by saying, you don't know what the deal is going to look like. So, so you can't you can't say I'm gonna wait till I have enough money. You don't know how much money you need. Like in your case, you didn't need very much money. In a lot of cases, you may not need a lot of a lot, lot of a lot of money. You might just need experience, education, or, or the or the right thing. I've met I've met people in the house say you can have the house whatever you want. I don't care. My husband left me and 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 I'm divorced and I, and he bought this house and he paid for it. You can have it. Or whatever. You, it, there's a lot of scenarios out there. You got people that 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 you can work with banks and and and, and talk to do, pennies on a dollar sometimes. Exactly, and 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 that's why it, you know, because those are the two things I hear. Either I don't know enough, or I don't have the money, or I don't know. You know, I don't have the funding in place. What if I got a house today? How? What lender do I go to? Let me give you another scenario. So I'm Say just, you. Mm-hmm. Say you're out there looking for deals, and you don't have the money to, to, to do the deal, but, you, but in, your, in your marketing and in your search for deals, you run across a deal that's fantastic. You don't have the money for that. Guess what you can do? You can bring it to a group like the Deals Maker Session, and I have a deal that I want to partner with somebody on. Is somebody willing to partner with you? If it's a good enough deal, you might be able to find a partner to, to, to be the money partner on that deal. Who knows? I mean, there's a lot. There's a hundred scenarios I could come up with. That's just one where you wouldn't need any money to 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 start your investment, and you might be work the deal. And there's investors out there will do that also. You bring them the deal, they'll work it, and they'll show you how to do it. It doesn't take any money to do that, or very little money to do it that way. So there's a lot of scenarios out there that you should be out there trying to find deals because you don't know what you're going to find until you look. Exactly. And everybody, the other thing that I, I see a lot at Georgia Rea is that real estate investing is so diverse. Not everybody is going to buy a house with, you know, a couple of thousand dollars or not everybody's just going to uh, assign the contract. There's so many ways to do a real estate deal that it amazes me. And you so know, and I really believe in coaching. I, I don't believe I would have had any success in any of the industries I've been in had I not found a coach in that industry and invested. I, I, I look at, again, Robert Allen. I invested 
a few thousand dollars with him, but I made that a hundred times over since then. And, you know, I'm sure you didn't just become uh, knowledgeable at what oh, no. you know now. Oh, no. I, you, I, you I took I, some training. I, I took a lot of the old-fashioned training the, the, back in the day when there was no money down training and things of that nature. Uh, all You name it, I probably bought it and sit on the shelf somewhere. Um, but, I, I, you know, you I didn't learn as much from them as I learned from, from trying to actually working the deal, getting a deal in front of me and figuring out with some of the deals I partnered with people on. Some of them I did but that's when you learn the most is by getting that deal and trying to work it and trying to trying to turn it into uh some some income for you. That's when you that's when you you know you 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 uh you really the rubber meets the road then and and you're committed. You know, it's not just a a casual conversation. It's it's not like the chicken and the egg. It's more like that pig and the bacon. You you, you when you get some skin in the game and you got that deal sitting on the table and you got to figure out how to make this thing profitable for you. There is no substitute to that, and and I think you're going to learn a, a whole lot more than any book or any course that you can read. Um, uh, bring the coursework with you, bring the paperwork, documentation with you, and see if it applies to some parts of it. But I'm telling you, not there's no substitute for having that deal and learning from that deal. And, and trust me, that'll be uh, something you won't forget. You can read those books, and the next day you might forget half of what you read. You know? You only you only retain a, a a third of what you read usually, uh, but when you when you live something and you lost some money or you have made some money doing something, that sticks with you. Uh, so are you seeing somebody actually work a deal? I think that sticks sticks with you a lot longer than somebody just trying to tell you how to do it and then hopefully you can find something that fits that scenario. Well, I'd like to ask you something before we open the calls and. Um, I noticed there's another gentleman who has the same kind of energy and success. He's, he's uh, you know, real estate investing. And come to find you and he know each other and you're good friends, uh, Thomas Coleman. I would like to know what, it is, what is it about George Aria that you have found helpful to you? Because I see so many people coming and having major success at George Aria. So I'd like to know what, you know, besides the, the, the trainings, um, what is it that, that is creating the success stories there that, that's being created? Well, I think one of the strongest things that Georgia Real Office investors is networking. I, 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 I've, I've met some of the smartest people, some of the most knowledgeable people about real estate at Georgia Real. And it's had, it has benefited my business. That's why that's that's why I, I, I take the time to volunteer with the deal maker session every every week because I like to try, try to give back to to people also because I've I've gained a whole lot more than what it cost me for the membership at Georgia Real and just just in in, in networking with people and then and then the information you pick up by meeting with people and, and talking and, and and discussing with people. That's doing the same thing you're doing. It's like it's like a convention of, of real estate people meeting every week. I mean, there's nothing you you can you can substitute that with. You, you have your finger on the pulse of the of the of the market when you're meeting with people doing the same thing you're doing every day. Uh, if you do that every week, and 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 everybody's experiencing something different, and that and, and that goes back to the networking. You learn from other people's experiences also. By, by sitting down and talking with them every week. And that's why I make it a point to try to make every one of my my meetings in there on Wednesday mornings, and I would encourage people to, to find something that 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 you enjoy doing, a, a group that you enjoy, and, and, and make that a, 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 a routine meeting on your in your schedule. Uh, and I think it will become invaluable because it, it, that's when I started out buying on the courthouse steps, it was because a guy did a presentation in in the deal makers about court, uh, courthouse steps for dummies, <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I think I could I could do that, and and I bought lots of houses on the, on the steps because of that one presentation. And I still remember the guy that did the presentation. He uh, to this day, um, uh, Bo Whitley. He he um he just impressed impressed me so much. I, I that's how I got you know my first I don't know how many houses on the steps 
because of that presentation. So that alone was well worth the, the price of membership. Uh, and then when you also look at the other benefits, uh, uh, the benefits from our, from our um, business associates and, and the uh, relationships we have with vendors like Sherwin-Williams and Home Depot, I mean, I just painted three houses in the last month. And and I, if without the, the Georgia Rio discount, I probably would have paid at least three times more in, in just in paint costs. That's well worth the membership right there. I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's it's uh, the, the relationships you have. And then Home Depot discounts and, and the rebates you get, it's well worth it. So. And I, I love to say you got to love the new Georgia Rio. There's so much energy and activity going on. At Georgia Rio, it amazes me. And then finding uh, people like yourself, I, I'm, I'm, I'm building a great uh, friendship with you, and I really appreciate that. I would love to keep you on the call forever. I, I've, I've gotten so much from doing this call with you, and I'm really hoping that you are willing to revisit these calls in the near future because they've been very beneficial to our audience. But I know that there's people on the call that want to ask some questions. So before we open the call for questions, is there anything you want to share before we do that? No, I, I, I really wanted to try to get as many questions in as possible since this is the, the, the last of the three calls, and I want to make sure that people had an opportunity to try to address whatever concerns or issues or questions they want to have. So I, I'm, I'm anxious to hear what kind of questions people may have. Awesome. Okay, so um, Karen, if you can unmute us, we'd appreciate it. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, this is Cherie. Oh, hi, Kevin. Hi, Cherie. So hi, Kevin. You were hi, able Wendy. To make the call tonight. <laughs> hi. Yeah, I couldn't talk earlier. Um, you were asking for people to introduce yourselves and. I, I couldn't figure out how to unmute myself. Um, okay. <laughs> so well, we're enough. glad you're able to ask now. It, to, it, do you have a question for Kevin? I do. I do. So I wanted to specifically ask Kevin, um, how much money did you start with, and what was your goal at the time, and how long did it take you to get there? Okay. Uh, well, I I started with a hundred thousand dollars, but that was because I was coming from corporate America and I wanted to buy on the courthouse steps. And um, back in the early 2000s when I started, uh, you could easily pick up a property on the steps for $40,000. And, mm-hmm. and I, would, I would pick it up for thirty dollars or $40,000. I'd put about another fifteen or twenty into it to rehab it. And back then you could go to the bank and you can refi and do a cash out. So the first oh, 10 or 15 okay. houses I bought, I, I did that strategy with i just i just went uh bought the house with my own money rehabbed it with my own money went to the bank and refied it because like i said back then it was it, a cash out refi was not uncommon and a stated mm-hmm. income no dot refi was not uncommon also and and I, I don't know if i'm i'm hoping not talking over too many people some people's heads but you could have you could have gone to the bank bought a house for thirty thousand dollars rehab it, as long as you documented what you did and had proof that you improved it, you could justify that house going from forty thousand dollars to a hundred and fifty or hundred and sixty thousand mm-hmm. dollars and then you can do a cash out refi. In other words, you can go to the bank and say, mm-hmm. I wanna borrow more than what I put into this house and and there was something called a cash out refi and they would just give you the everything above what mm-hmm. you put in that house, and it mm-hmm. it was beautiful. Yeah. It was a wonderful thing. I, I, I also <laughs> believe everything in this business is cyclical. Eventually, those kind of loans will come back. They're a little bit scarce now, but uh, and mm-hmm. no-doc loans and stated income loans are kind of scarce now, but I think eventually everything is going to come back once the market gets back on its feet again. But that's what I, that's how I started out, buying on the courthouse steps uh, and uh, with just a little funds. Uh, um, uh-huh. And another thing about the courthouse steps is a little bit different than the way a lot of people are investing in in real estate now. In Georgia, uh, in case you have somebody not in Georgia, uh, Georgia is a state when 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 you buy on the courthouse steps, you can't go and win a win a win a bid and then go get a loan. 
you have to sit you have to pay cash right there on the spot. Mm-hmm. So you have mm-hmm. you have to you have to bring the money right there. So if you're going to pay 30 or 40,000 dollars or 50,000 dollars for a house, you got to uh-huh. they stop they stop bidding, hold their hand out and say give me the money and then they give you a a, a, <laughs> a slip of paper and you get a deed uh, in lieu. Uh uh, uh, deed under power, I, I guess, is what it's called. Uh, uh, but that's how that's how. And that was back in the early 2000s. And if you if somebody wants to go out court out steps, that's still the way it is now. You're going to need those funds immediately. You can't you mm-hmm. can't turn around and get a loan. Or you can get a loan later, but to get the pur- purchase on the steps in Georgia, you need to have those funds right there uh, mm-hmm. on the spot. Okay. Thank you. Did that answer your question, Sherry? It does. Thank you. I just wanted to get a picture. Awesome. Thank you again for making the call tonight. I appreciate it. Thank you for the calls. This is wonderful. I'm learning awesome. a lot. Thank you. And uh, I, I would be remiss if I didn't also mention, be very careful if you're going to buy on the courthouse steps because that's one of the purest forms of capitalism that there is in America, which is why I like it and which is why some people don't like it. But that's why I like it because it, it is a all or nothing. When you, when you win the bid, there is no more negotiating. It is your property regardless of what the state of that property is, regardless of if there's any kind of uh, uh, superior liens on that property. So you've got to make sure you do your due diligence if you're going to go to the courthouse steps because it is a a final sale when you win that when you win that bid and you pay off that and you pay that 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 attorney that's your puppy and if there's a <laughs> superior lien then you then it's still in place it doesn't it only mm-hmm. it, 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 it it wipes away any sub, subordinate liens or any liens that are below that but any liens that are above the one you just purchased is still in effect and plus also any mm-hmm. kind of tax liens that uh, they're still in, in in front of you, what you bought too. So, just be be careful if you're going to do go to the courthouse steps that you do your due diligence, and you and you make sure you what you're bidding on is what mm-hmm. you want. Okay. And I see you at Deal Makers every Wednesday. So bring your situations and <laughs> you know whatever your deals mm-hmm. are, bring them to the class. Mm-hmm. I will. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It, uh, anybody else on the call with a question for Kevin? Yes. My name is James Kotu. Hi, uh, James. I'm, How are you? I'm doing fine. Yes, Kevin. Uh, I heard you talking about somebody partnering with an experienced person. So yes. I'm new at this, you know, Georgia Real. I just read it from New York, and okay. the market is kind of you know new to me. Mm-hmm. So if if I if I were to partner with somebody like yourself, what would I take? What would you what? If I wanted to partner with you, like you know, until I learn the market and the kind of strategies you guys use down here, what would it cost me? Well, a lot would depend on 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 what we're trying to do, what we're trying to partner on, and what's your strategy. Because when I, when I choose somebody that I'm partner with, I try to make sure that I understand what their goals are, so that because I know what mine are, and 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 I want to make sure that that you we're meeting what you want out of the deal too. Because I want to make it a win win for everybody, and, and you have to start with with that. Sit down, sharing, sharing what you're trying to get out of this deal, what you want out of this deal. Sometimes people want experience. Sometimes people want want profit. Sometimes people want a combination of, of the two. So you have to sit down and talk about what your what your goals are, and then we then we will sit down and see if we can work, work into a common agreement. If we come up to a common agreement that we both can agree on, then we work together. If we don't, then we just part friends. But. Uh, Oh, okay. It's, 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 really, it's really difficult to try to tell somebody how much they need to come and partner with somebody with, because without understanding what their goals are and what they what they bring to the table. Some people bring more experience than others. Some people bring uh, some some crafts. Uh, some people are, are are good at contracting. They can do all kind of. They can do all of the physical labor. They can they can rehab the house. 
some people bring that skill and, and, and you know so it's it's it, you try to work with the skill set you have and 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 then see how they complement each other oh okay the area that I'm comfortable with in doing real estate deals I'm more like you know trying to do lease option deals okay it, okay. it could be a lease option flip and it could be a sandwich lease I am more comfortable with that. And my main thing right now is I'm looking for people with property, you know, that I can get them to uh, do a rental own. Because I have a lot of tenant buyers that are free screen, who I know got cash and everything, got stable employment, but they just need some time, you know, to work on their credit, which will also put them in credit repair. Mm-hmm. So that's yeah, the kind of that. That's the kind of help I would want right now. You know, like if I was trying to, you know, work with you as an experienced person, maybe to see if you got some property that you know we can do that or you know something along that line. Yeah, and 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 that's a that's a potential that 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 you can do. But whether it's me or anybody. What I recommend you do is to, is, is to meet with people just like they do. It's, it's a business. You're running a business, and you're trying to form a partnership. That partnership has to be set out and thought through. And then you, you, you write up a joint venture agreement on how you guys are going to operate the, the, and how you're going to make decisions on the deals, how you're going to pay for the deal, how you're going to split profits on the deal. All of those things need to be worked through. And, and like I said, there is no one way to do it. Some people need uh, uh, experience. Some people need money. Some people need other things. So you 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 have to tailor your joint agreement to what the needs of the people are, and and, and then you run from there. But you have to start with meeting with that person and making sure that that person is a good partner for you. Uh, everybody that everybody's got different personalities and different ways of doing business. And you got to make sure that that's a good mesh for you. So, so I would say, I would say you start by coming to some of the meetings and and networking and meeting people and talking to me and talking to other people and seeing what 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 kind of personalities you because you're going to be working with almost like a marriage almost. You 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 it's, this is not you know an easy situation. I've seen so many partnerships end up bad because the people can't work together or they've had different different mindsets going in or different goals going in or didn't understand each other's goals. So if you can if you can you can you can help alleviate some of the problems that people run into down the road if you sit down and you have those conversations early on. Okay. That is your question. Okay. Hey Kevin, let me go to Danny Tech. Danny Tech. Danny Tech. Hey Wendy and Kevin, how y'all doing? Fantastic. How are you, Danny? Thank you for making the call also tonight. Excited. You have a question for Kevin? Uh yes, I sure do. Thank you. Kevin, I just want to just ask you, you know, my question is more on, you know, you know, in financing today. Mm-hmm. And I know that you said I know what you said earlier about how uh, you know, you went to court out steps. You you got the properties to re- rehab them, and then ultimately uh, you did a cash out refi, and and that cash out refi to me is telling me that you took on debt on that problem. So so how do you feel about you using debt, you know, in today's market to finance uh, properties? I think that's I think it's great. Now and. I want everybody to filter my 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 comments because I'm a risk taker. I don't mind taking risks. I try to take wise risks. I try to mediate as as much risk as possible. But I'm not afraid of risk because I'm I'm a firm believer that there's a there's a risk reward uh, uh, that 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 that's that's in the universe. And, I, and so I I I don't have a problem with risk, and debt is a risk. And I, I, I'm a strong believer in using other people's money. So by virtue, by, by, by that very common, that means I don't have a problem with debt. Uh, and, and if I could, I think there's good debt and there's bad debt. 
and, and, and you, if you if you take on debt that's well calculated and well positioned, then I don't think there's wrong anything wrong with that. Uh, everybody says you want to have property 100 percent paid for. That's all fine and good. That means you paid for it 100 percent. Then if you got that kind of money, then that's all fine and good too. But uh, I learned that I could I could acquire more properties if I let the properties pay for each other. So if I bought a house for forty thousand dollars and I put twenty into it, and it's worth a hundred and sixty, I would not go out and, and get a ninety percent loan on that property for a couple of different reasons. One is because the ninety percent loan, if I'm going to hold that property, the rent's not going to pay for it. If it was say a hundred eighty thousand dollar house, and I went and took a uh, a 90% loan back in the day you could do that too by the way uh, or, or 80% loan on that house um, you could do that pretty easily and and, wow. and 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 so if you borrowed 140 150 thousand dollars on against that house I wouldn't do that because one it wouldn't pay for itself from the rent wouldn't wouldn't be able to pay that off plus that'd be too much of a debt uh, ratio for me on that one particular property what I would do is I would maybe only borrow ninety or a hundred thousand dollars on that hundred and eighty thousand dollar house that I paid sixty four, and I take that other forty thousand dollars and buy another house with it. So now I got one house that paid for two houses. Yep. You see, so I got and and if you got another hundred eighty two hundred thousand dollar house and you bought another hundred against it, you can buy another two more houses with that hundred thousand dollars. Now you got see how see how the sort of snowballs. <laughs> right, and and that's what I call yeah. smart debt because one you 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 supposedly, and I say supposedly because the market has made me a liar here recently because I wouldn't I I never want to pull out more than seventy percent of the appraised value of a house whenever I looked at trying to pull out money on a property. I didn't know back then that the properties were going to drop by six seventy percent. <laughs> I thought the worst they would drop is thirty percent. Well, I was I, that's something I learned, but. The fact that I didn't pull out very much of the equity, more than maybe 60 or 65 percent, protected me when it did drop. So that because rents did not drop with the property values, so in my buy and hold scenario, I was still protected, uh, even though I was upside down on the house. I wasn't upside down from a from an income perspective. In other words, I wasn't losing money. I was right. still making money. I could still pay the loan off. And I can still make money with the rents that I was making because I only borrowed sixty percent of the appraised value of the house, so my notes were smaller. Did you follow me? Right, so right. I'm listening. Go ahead. Kind of, so that's what I call smart debt. If you got a hundred and eighty thousand dollar house and you only borrow ninety thousand dollars on it, and and you go off and buy two more houses with that ninety thousand dollars, I think that's smart debt. Now you got three houses and you only got one lo- one note. Okay. Okay. You see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I and I and I do appreciate you asking that. You know, and uh, and like I say, you know, taking on debt. You know, t- you know, of course, good debt. Uh, you know, is part of my uh, real estate investment and philosophy. You know, and uh, and and it's what I'm doing today. So, hey, I appreciate you answering that. Okay, and thanks a lot, Wendy. Also, but be very careful because, like I said, even I I got I got I got stuck too with with being upside down on houses because of that, even though I thought I protected myself by by only only uh leveraging the property sixty percent. I didn't know prop I thought the worst properties values would drop with maybe ten or twenty or thirty percent at the worst. I, I had no idea it would drop seventy percent. But but the only thing that saved me in that scenario is that I had a buy and hold strategy where my rents never dropped seventy percent. Matter of fact, the rents almost stayed flat. If they if they dropped at all, it was only maybe five or ten five percent. So, so when the market took a serious dip, my rental income didn't take that that same dip. And so uh, I was, you know, oh, I just want to just and just kind of piggyback on uh, on uh, like what you just said, and uh and. And that's why, you know, you know, I was taught, you know, and of course y'all y'all always talk about, you know, you know, you in, you invest what you invest first for cash flow. And and right. even if the, the price of the property goes down, you know, one thing about it though, uh as as long as you got that cash coming in, you are you are protected. Now and now having said that, you know, and I know I think I asked you this at the 
asked you this before about kind of looking forward. You know, over the next six, uh, 12 months, uh, even 18 months, you know, just in the uh, in the metro Atlanta area, where do you see this the real estate going? Prices? Do do you? Because I'm kind of bullish on it myself, but do you? still see a rise coming uh, l let me let me s touch on that a little bit more too because you said something very important and it's very key when you when you invest in something when you when you put your money on a deal make sure that deal uh, it, it cash flows today not tomorrow don't plan for it to cash flow in the future it needs to cash flow today that was a very key point that you made, and I think I don't know if it, if, if everybody got that because all too often I get these investors say, "Well, I'm buying this because it's going to appreciate." Well, that's all fine and good if something appreciates, but you need to make sure that 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 deal that you have is a good deal today because it may not appreciate. And if it and so 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 don't don't that's called speculation. When you when you when you when you're saying I'm buying them with, with hopes of making my money down the road from the appreciation, you follow me? Absolutely, sure I do. Okay, but uh, now getting back to you on the market, in my opinion, I think the market is 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 bouncing back. We had a we had a drastic drop in the market. I mean, the market dropped so fast that none of the esper, experts had anticipated dropping as fast as it did. I literally had properties dropping. 30 and 40 percent year to year in value. So nobody really anticipated that, in my opinion. Uh, 25 to 30 year drops in year to year is, is crazy. I think the market is bouncing back, but I don't think it's going to bounce back the way it dropped. I think what we're going to see is a double digit appreciation year to year, but it's not going to be anywhere near the way it depreciated uh, in the past years. I think it's going to be in the low teens. So I think from year to year, it, you're going to see anywhere from 10 to to 15 percent appreciation on on values in in Atlanta and in the Georgia area. So that having said that, that means that we, we're probably going to get back to our 2004, 2002 prices in probably the next five to 10 years. Okay. Okay. Once again, hey, I appreciate it. Okay. And we appreciate everybody that has been on the call tonight. Really want to thank uh, Sherry and and James and, and Danny for asking questions. Just out of respect of everybody's time, the call has been over an hour tonight, and we know that Kevin McQuay is giving really good content. I encourage you guys to come out to the Georgia headquarters. And you can get to speak to him in person, but there's also a lot of great evening classes going on. I encourage you to go to the website, which is georgiarea.org, georgiarea.org, and look and see the classes that may be of interest to you. But more than anything, it's a very warm environment. I'm going to encourage you to come out and get to, to know the people and, and, and get a feel of exactly what your career is all about. And I guarantee you everything that you're looking for to do your real estate investing is a career. I also want to encourage you to come out to the general meeting, which is usually the second Monday of each month. And it's usually right now at the Wyndham Hotel or 285 in Power Ferry. The closer to 5.30 you can get there, the better. I know some people are coming from work and you're going to get there after 6. Fine, but the closer or the earlier you can get there, the better. And I really want you to come out to Georgia. If you have more questions, if there's more content you'd like us to bring to you through these content calls, feel free to let me know when I see you at any one of our events. And uh, I just really appreciate everybody that's been supporting and, and asking the questions. And if you've missed Hello. any of the calls, we have them on replay. You can also go to the Georgia YouTube channel, subscribe, watch the, the videos we have there now. Uh, the teleclasses have been put on YouTube as a video version. 
so you can listen to the information, watch the video, please subscribe and leave a comment, and we'll continue to bring you the kind of information that's going to help you, as Kevin said, pull the trigger and get started. And what I would love to do tonight, uh, if you, again, pay attention to the Georgia uh, website, the .org website, next month we have an amazing training on wholesaling on a two-string budget. But if you heard anything that Kevin said, I really want you to, like, just get in there and do it and connect with the coach. Get the mentors. Don't go out there and try to do it yourself. At this point, what I'd love to do is turn over the call and allow uh, uh, Kevin McQuay to close us out. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing this call. You did an amazing job, and I'm listening to the replays because you gave a lot of very helpful information. So, Kevin, please close us out. I uh, just wanted to close this out by saying uh, I hope everybody go back and goes back and listen to the replay and, and, and try to walk through the steps I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the call, what I call the real estate investing process. And the, the key to all of this, and I restate this again, is, you, is your self, self-assessment, your self-evaluation of what kind of person you are, what your strengths and weaknesses is, are, and, and, and creating a plan that, that – that, that accentuates your your positives and, and and helps helps protect you from your from your from your uh, shortfalls, and that's that's if you don't walk away with anything, plan your work, and then work your plan. Take some time, sit down and 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 develop that plan. But without that plan, then you're just dreaming, and you're not you're not really having you don't have that focus that you need to be successful. Okay? And with that being said, everybody. We thank you again. Have a great evening, and we'll see you around the George Rhea headquarters. Talk to you soon. Thanks again, Kevin. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night.